In today's episode, we have Becky. She's a mindset and divine energetics coach. Becky, how are you? I'm well, thank you, lovely. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come on Gentle Touch. Where do you join us from? So I'm in the UK right now, yeah. Beautiful. What part? So in the southwest, so near Bath. Lots of people know Bath and Stonehenge spiritually. (laughs) Yeah, beautiful. I I was looking for your post and sometimes the post, the location is London and in others is York. So I was thinking maybe she's in York or maybe she's in London. I'm not too sure. I move around a lot. (laughs) Yeah. What's your favorite in the UK? Uh, I do like where I am now. It's very yeah. rural, it's very oh. close to nature. So I've got a dog. So I love being out in nature and being able to go like straight out my door into the fields. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. I still get a little bit, because I grew up in London and currently in London, I'm based in central London. So mm-hmm. when it comes to something very rural, I kind of get a little bit uneasy, <laughs> you know? But say it's, it's, it's nice to see nature. It's nice to see the fields. It's, it's nice to... um spend time and listen to the birds and Mm -hmm. and just it's so good for the soul um but i'm slowly getting there maybe half an hour (laughs) into the outskirts and then just slowly slowly grow it until i'm comfortable enough to go rule becky tell me about your journey how has your journey been Mm. it feels like it's been a long one but juicy and expansive along the way um so now you know as you introduced me i'm a mindset and divine energetics coach but the reason I've become that is because my mindset needed work. It was so conditioned and full of fear and limiting beliefs that I was my own worst enemy for many, many years. And it's only really been in the last three years I've been expanding beyond that sense of self that was so limited and fearful and stuck. So it's it's felt like a long three years, but it's been transformational. And as we know, when we're on this journey of self-improvement, it expands quickly. And yeah, I'm now in this gorgeous place helping others with their mindset. Beautiful. How did you know that something is the mindset? It's me. Because sometimes we get so used Mm -hmm. to our patterns, our behaviors, our habits, that we become stuck. We become stagnant in the energy, stagnant in progression, stagnant. And we become so comfortable in our comfort zone that we're just like, it's them or we play victim or we're like oh no it's them it's not me yeah yeah I coasted for a long time so I actually fell into human resources and I worked in central London had the London lifestyle at one point and um, I actually worked in luxury fashion which Whoa. Was, it felt like a dream come true like the devil went harder like there's so many is it like that <laughs> like that the floors and that's what I always ask when something I'm just like is it it was glam, like what well, I say, it's glamorous. The actual job wasn't glamorous, but spending my days in Bond Street, going into Alexander McQueen, you know, just casually, you know, buying something so I discount, you know, was the dream at the time. Um, but I kind of, I fell into it, and I always had this imposter syndrome that I never really put myself forward for new jobs because I never thought I was good enough. So I was fortunate that a lot of managers around me saw my potential and believed in me and I was always progressing but through their belief in me not in the belief I had it myself so I was very playing small and coasting and had the whole blame game in my mind you know that kind of victim mindset and imposter syndrome came up a lot and then I had this dream job that, you know, girls would die to have, you know, I had free Gucci clothes like coming to me and had had all the things, but I felt so unfulfilled and so out of alignment and so stuck. And that's when my mindset journey began because I started to look inwards and think, hold on, all of these outside external things aren't scratching that itch. I don't feel good. And something's got to change within. And that's when I started to look in and be like, I don't feel good enough. I don't feel worthy of being here, right? I feel out of place. I'm not appreciating it. I don't know where I'm heading. I don't want my boss's job. What am I doing? And I don't know if you, if you're like the Saturn return thing, like every 20, when you're 28, like when the placement of Saturn, you really do question life. It's like a full cycle of life. And I was spent a year of questioning, who am I? What am I doing? What's my purpose? <laughs> Feeling like a midlife crisis, right? But really questioning everything. 
Um, and that's when it was coming back to me of like, okay, something's got to change firstly within me because I'm just not believing in myself. I don't really like myself. I don't know myself. I felt so distant from myself, even though externally, everyone would think Becky's living the high life, you know, champagne, luxury, London lifestyle. But within, I was so unhappy. Wow, powerful. Um, Becky, how did this, because sometimes when our managers or the people around us believe in us, that gives us the extra push, the oomph to, to go forward, even if we're not ready, even though it's like, no, 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 this is perfect for you. You've, you've got all the qualities, you reach all the, all the, um, you meet everything that we need. When is it that you knew? So you, so you began questioning everything and then did it start with the community asking them or did you start to begin outside or did you just look inwards? I looked inwards and I freaked out because I just thought like if someone would have said to me Becky what are your interests like what do you love outside of this job I wouldn't have been able to tell you like I had no connection to myself I was so my identity was my career and and then I wasn't liking my career and I was thinking what am I doing like what is this and you know, I'm not even really, I am an ambi- ambitious person, but I wasn't really ambitious in my career. I was just falling in, I was just hard working and, you know, I was growing and I had these gorgeous managers around me. Like, I'm so grateful that every manager I had saw something within me and was always putting me forward for new opportunities. And I was coasting within. It was just this sense of self. And it was like, well, if they see it, let's see what happens. Oh, okay, let's see what happens. And I got to a place, you know, that was really great. But then I was coming up to my 30th birthday. I was getting married. We start panicking, right? I'm 28 and I'm yeah. already panicking. I'm like, at fate, oh my gosh, am I yeah. still going to be in the career? Am I still doing, have I accomplished what I've needed? So even now I'm mm. like putting hard work in because I want to, I want to see improvement, right? We want to see change. We want to. Yeah. yeah. You question, don't you? And you're in your Saturn return, my lovely. <laughs> you're 28. Like it's a season of quantum shifting and everyone, when people reflect on like when the biggest changes happen personally, professionally it's around the 28 to 30 mark because of this planetary positioning and then how so say for the person that has no clue about set and return how do they know or how can they work with it or how can because it can be scary it can freak you out a little bit you're like wait what is going on everyone's getting married (laughs) I'm still single I have no babies what is going people are buying houses people are moving people are traveling so it's it's it can be quite scary it can be quite lonely as well Yeah. And I think a lot of it is conditioning the shoulds, right? What we should be doing, what success looks like, what our life should look like, what, you know, what our profession should look like. So there's a lot of conditioning around it. But I think that the Saturn return is within us because you just start to question it more deeply because the conditioning has always been there. But maybe it's starting to be like, is this really what I want? Does this really light me up? is this where I see my future? And that's really all it is. It's just this internal focus within. And this is where quantum shifts happen because decisions are made, right? You start making choices. I coasted a lot because I had a lot of fear around my choices because what became really clear for me is you need to leave your job. And when you spent like 10 years really building your career, to hear that in your mind, in your heart of like, you need to leave, I had so much fear around it because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Yeah, but I eventually did. (laughs) How long did it take you to leave? So I probably sat on it for a good few months. And then I actually manifested this life coach through work. Somehow I got on this scheme and they gave me a life coach, which was just divine timing. So everyone was talking to their life coach around leadership and stepping into like next level them. And I was speaking to her about how do I leave? (laughs) I'm ready to go. Um, So then I eventually got the courage to leave. And then I turned my three months notice into nine months out of fear. I just clung on for dear life um, because I had no plan. I was leaving and I had no idea what I wanted to do. I just had this desire to be my own boss and do things my way. But I had no idea what that would be. So I had all this fear of the unknown. 
it's scary though it's so scary especially when you've put so much effort so much love so much mind into something we work hard we achieve the mm -hmm. targets we escalate we progress to then that stability and sometimes we get rewards with that we get the pension we get the annual leave we get so many things we get the discounts we get the network we get the community as well the friends um did your life coach help you in any way Oh, completely. It was the first time I'd ever really reflected on what was going on in my mind. This was the start of the journey. It was someone pause it. I'd never had therapy at the time, but it was a pause. And it was just like, tell me what's going on in your mind. Let's unpick it. Right. And that was the first time I'd ever really paused because it was just a lot was going on in my mind. And she made me see that actually there's a question mark over this career and it's safe to explore something else. And it was powerful. It was this big pivotal moment in my life because I wouldn't be here right now I'd still be in my HR career somewhere <laughs> wow and then what did that look like so you had the nine month notice and then from there did you in your spare what was you doing in your spare time was you exploring hobbies was you watching YouTube videos what did that look mm -hmm. like deep into YouTube so I was getting into my own mindset so my first entry point I think was Tony Robbins I think a lot of people start there because he's everywhere on YouTube and I was he's yeah. he appears on the front page yeah <laughs> you look up like mental health or like mindset he's there isn't he and um, and so yeah I started my mornings just listening to his videos I was just consuming a lot about thinking differently thinking bigger you know being braver and so that was the the start and then I was just trying to be curious of what do I really want to do and lots of ideas were coming up. I wanted to be a party planner at one point because I thought I just love events. I love luxury. There was it's very different to attend an event to then plan it because I used to, as a teenager, I used to do wedding catering and after 15, 20 weddings, I was like, I'm so done with this. Exactly that. Energetically, I thought, no, I don't want to give up my weekends. <laughs> I don't want to work evenings. So I was like, that one struck off the list. Um, and then I eventually found my passion because I was really leaning into like manifestation energetics at that time. And I fell in love with feng shui. So that was literally my first entry point where I thought I want everyone to know about feng shui. I want them to know how powerful the energetics of their environment is. I want to show them how that by shifting things around, cleaning energy actually creates such an impact. And that was the first time I got that spark back of like, this feels good. Yeah. And then it was just divine. I say divine timing. Obviously the pandemic was emotional on so many Gosh. levels. It was savage. But, yeah. But my message was divine timing for that season, right? Because people were in their homes. People were noticing the clutter and the energy of their homes. And so my message was really powerful. But what I discovered through helping people is actually it all comes back to mindset. Because even if you cleanse a space, if you have habits that are still full of clutter and yeah. other habits, you're just going to create more clutter. And that brought the passion back to actually it all comes back to how we see ourselves and our habits and our ways of being so it initially started through helping people in their homes and then as I saw the impact the positive transformational impact on my business with my mindset I was like I need to go fully in and I retrained as an NLP and hypnosis and EFT practitioner and since then I've just been deeper and deeper into mindset energetics and now the nervous system I love that how did you know who to pick because there's so much on the market and there's so many things coming at us from the community from our career from our limiting beliefs from what success may look like that society throws at us how did you know and then, and then when you finally choose what you want to do, there's so much out there that you don't even know who to go to. Yeah, yeah. And, and for me, it was just this soul knowing. I think the passion speaks volumes. Yeah. And the feng shui was always the stepping stone for me, right? I, if I would have gone straight into mindset, the imposter syndrome would be like, who are you telling people mindset when your mindset was so awful, right? I needed that stepping stone. And that's why it's always a divine unfolding, I was meant to build my confidence. I built my visibility on Instagram. I really showed up as this true Becky in an online space, really started to heal those fears I had around that so that when mindset came along, I was ready to hit the, round, the, the ground running. And 
I believe it's just this inner knowing, this passion of what feels good and expansive and trusting that feeling and just seeing where it goes. You don't need all the answers, right? Don't have to have it all perfectly tied up in a bow to make things successful. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that you said that. I was going to tell, I was going to ask you something, but then I, like my mind just went blank. Uh, Mine does that all the time. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh my God, I just had it. What, what happened? Um, Becky, tell me about, oh, oh, my question came back. Mm-hmm. Becky, with regards to um, knowing, with regards to transition, um, and, and obviously you built your, that, you built your confidence and in social media helped a lot. Instagram helped a lot. Was the community in your transition the same than, than from your career? From my HR career, do you mean? No, it was, if I'm honest, I could have promoted on LinkedIn. I could have continued that connection, but there was almost this and there still is to some extent. It's almost like I wanted to draw a line in the sand. I almost separated it. And I know that in the future, I will go back on LinkedIn and show that side of me. But I don't know whether you or your listeners, listeners have ever felt this. But when you're changing yourself and really coming back into this authenticity, the fear of judgment and the fear of what people are going to say by you doing something differently really can hold you back and so I made the decision that I'm just going to create this new community and be myself there and even then I had friends even message me saying oh my god Becky like you just went live well that's that's awkward (laughs) right because they just found it so uncomfortable that I was stepping up and being this version of me that was so passionate about this subject when Maybe they hadn't seen that side of me, but it was me stepping into who I really am and what I want to do. And that makes other people uncomfortable. I'm really glad I asked this question because some people, when I've interviewed people, when I listen to a podcast, some people really struggle with that in their own environment to the point where they actually relocate somewhere new Mm -hmm. only because it's like the community have seen you in such a way for so many years that to, to see your transformation, they struggle with that and they don't understand it. And they're like, why? So yeah. yeah. So how did you do that? Obviously you dealt with it in a way that you began your new community. You started stepping up. Did it ever feel lonely or where did you, where would you gravitate? So for the person that's in this, in the middle of transition, in the middle of building their, because it gets lonely yeah yeah it definitely does and you can still feel that now you know I was actually speaking to a friend on the phone who I met through the online world right we've I've made so many friends through my Instagram that we just stay in contact we're growing together expanding together and you I I truly believe you have friends and communities for different reasons right Mm. family are just going to support you they're going to love you regardless right? You've got friends that maybe if you're expanding in a different direction, they might not understand or even have the context to have conversations. You know, if you went, oh, you know, I went on IG live and there's only five people there or something, they'd be like, I don't understand what that means, you know? (laughs) Whereas then you have the community of like people that are entrepreneurs, they are CEOs and you can just have those niche conversations and feel so seen and heard. And I think for me, when I was stepping into this entrepreneurship, like a business owner, I needed to find my community and it happens naturally by just being in the arena and making connections and going to events and making friends. But it was so important for me to have those people that I could just speak so candidly to. Like I've got so many, I'm so grateful for it that we were just messaging. We're like, I'm having a wobble today right? I'm launching. Um, I'm just feeling, I have, you know, I haven't meditated. I'm avoiding it. Like, can you just, <laughs> can you guide me? And then you just have these friends just like say exactly what you need back. Right. And that sense of community for me personally, who works from home has a, it's lonely. It can be very lonely. Like sometimes I'm in the apartment and where I'm staying now, there's a shop, there's a flat that's converted into a shop. So I technically don't even leave the building for yeah. days on end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I felt that this morning, right? I woke up, I'm in the middle of a launch. I noticed someone, <laughs> thank you. I, I noticed a bit of procrastination, a bit of self-sabotage. And I was like, I'm going to the local spa. 
got my dog, we went to the spa, spent like the afternoon just in this bougie luxury environment. And I was like, that's what I needed. I needed to talk to a stranger. I needed to like, just, you know, speak to the staff. I need that connection. Even though I'm an introvert, being at home stifles my creativity. I need to be out there. I need to be talking to friends on the phone. And for many of us, it can get lonely. But that's also the reason that my offers now are usually around community because I know I value it. I need it. So I do masterminds about to launch a membership and it's very much around like-minded women coming together because you want to speak your truth and feel seen and understood. You want to say, oh, I've got so much to do, but I, I just want to watch TV. And then someone can be like, I hear you, but come on, let's, let's work let's through it. it. Let's, let's, we got to get yeah. this one, girl, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. That support, because otherwise you find yourself coasting, you find yourself just in that self-sabotage. I love that. Becky, tell me about your, well, was it your boss that sent you on a trip to Rome, to Italy? Yeah. So this was when I was working in a, another luxury retail and I was just burning out. I was. Could you tell? Okay. Yeah, it was, it was, again, it comes from a core belief that I wasn't good enough. I had magically manifested. I only have applied for this one job because I was having a boring time. I was coasting my old one. It was, a, it, was it, it was at Fortnum and Mason. I used to, whenever I used to go to London, I'd go there and buy tea. Like I'm such a British girl. Well, what, what is that? For, for, I so don't know what that is. Fortnum and Mason is, it's like a luxury department store. So it's kind of like a yeah, 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 yeah. So I always loved it. It always was like the epitome of like luxury London for me. And I randomly was having a bad day or just a boring day. You know, when you get to a point when you are coasting and not challenged. Fed up. You're fed up. You're yeah. done. And oh, I just yeah. looked up jobs. And it was the first one that came up. And I was like, you know what? Let's see what happens. The only job I applied for, I got it. It was amazing. And so I went into this very different HR role and I didn't feel good enough I felt out of my comfort zone so the only way that I thought I could make it work was by working really hard and it got to a point where I and it we worked on top of the store so you were surrounded by the managers and the employees so it was like chaos during the day <laughs> there's always something going wrong and that was my role to deal with what was going wrong oh. Girl, <laughs> so the only way I could survive was coming in at 7 a.m. and then leaving at like 10 p.m. So anyway, I felt that I could get in control and I was just going home, sleeping, coming back, crying all the time, like completely burnt out on every single level. And my manager just said, you got to go on holiday. <laughs> like you just take three weeks off, do whatever you want, but go. Um, and that was a big moment for me because I just decided to book a trip to Italy. I flew out by myself, first time ever. And again, it was the start of this questioning my life. Like, what am I doing? Um, I'm so burnt out. Is this really what I saw, you know, my London career like? Where you actually you don't really enjoy anything. And I was working weekends to catch up. I was so you'll never catch up there's 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 a point where you'll never when I see um because um, my background's in healthcare and um sometimes I go I I technically work locum so there's this there's this clinic that I would go to is plastic surgery is private and um my friend works there and she kind of does like the admin mm -hmm. and kind of like yeah admin role and and she does I don't know, she she works in the office basically. She orders things, she orders implants, she orders like the clothing, she does the paperwork, she does so much, she does the charging. And she would stay up. I stay up because in theatre, there's a patient having plastic surgery and I have to recover it, recover them. So it's like I have yeah. to stay. But it's like she would stay till 10, 11, midnight. And I'm like, homegirl, you're never gonna catch up. Like there's never, there's never a thing where you're gonna go home and rest and be like, ah, oh, fine, no, it, it's never gonna because no. it's it's working 24 seven, seven days a week. There's there's no catching up. So it's like, where do yeah. you draw the line? Exactly. And I think if that, if that was a situation now, I would have the confidence in myself to say, we need more team members, 
right? I would have the confidence, but I think because I was in this mindset of I'm not good enough, I don't know how I got this job, yeah. I'm out of my depth. Yeah. I didn't want anyone to know that I was struggling. And I made it mean about something about me rather than there's more work than one job. And that was the learning I got afterwards on reflection of like, this isn't about me. This is a very demanding job that no one could do in a nine to five. And, and it's, again, it's not brain surgery, right? It's, or well, it's not that important. It's retail, right? It's people buying tea, <laughs> right and I'm literally giving my whole life to it and so that was a big turning moment where it was like okay this job isn't right for me um and then I somehow I think it can't remember how got um the next job in luxury fashion um which wasn't as demanding but then that brought to life that I have no passion for what I'm doing anymore even if I have all of the free clothes and store openings and free champagne (laughs) I know. <laughs> Becky, what did you learn from your travels from Italy? From Because you went to a few places. You went to Rome, Florence, Bologna, Verona, and Lake Garda. Mm. I, it was the connection with myself yeah. for me because it was a solo trip. It was really me getting to know me again. And I don't think I ever had given myself that time and space. Um, I started journaling. Yeah. I was really just exploring what I loved and what I realized what I loved is just like flowing around cities. I'm so naturally in my feminine energy and intuition. I just love, and actually I was meant to stay in Florence for two nights, I think, but the whole trip wasn't planned. I all, I got my flight to Rome and then didn't even have anywhere to stay or no other plans of where I wanted to go. It was meant to be after such a structured yeah, like you're burning out. We're getting rid of that. We're getting rid of control. We're getting rid of yeah. us. I needed to flow, and that's when I realized this is my power. This is when I'm most creative. This is when I'm happiest. Yeah. When I don't have any plans, and I genuinely can just follow my intuition. And I actually extended my time in Florence for another three nights, just because wow. I could. And I was just flowing around, like people watching, and it was just like I was my battery was being refueled and I was connecting with myself. Is Florence big? I've never been. Oh, no, it's not that big, but it's, it's my favorite place on earth. Yeah. yeah. It's it's where people go from the other side of the world to get married there. And I'm like, I need to go. I've been to Rome and Venice, but mm-hmm. I still need to, there's other parts I need to go. Becky, how important is letting go of the past? Uh, 100% important. <laughs> Right, because the the biggest lesson for me is that I was allowing the past to define who I was. And the past wasn't even true, right? All these stories around I'm not good enough were learnt or decided. And I was letting a younger me deciding that I wasn't good enough shape who I was in the now and this is why a lot of the coaching and healing that I do is very much detaching and learning from those old decisions we all have like a go-to story like mine was I'm not enough someone's might be I'm different you know whatever it is it's just when that story is in the driver's seat it's because you have all the attachment to the past and what I'm passionate about is understanding where it comes from unhooking from it understanding it means nothing about you on a soul level so that you can show up in the now and create your future I love that that's 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 beautifully put Becky I've read one of your blog posts and it says the money game frequency energetics and aligning that with the vision that you want to have more how does that work yeah so on my blog I, I used I used to call it soulful Sundays and it was a ritual for every Sunday um, you have I, so, how, how long have you been doing it you have so many like yeah. so, and not only do you have so many you have three different categories yeah I just adore it and this is what really got me excited about my membership is to really support people with the rituals because in In manifestation, everything's energy, everything's energetic, our minds, our bodies, it's all energetic. So when we understand that we get to play with the energetics, that's when we manifest divine miracles. And that includes money, that includes success, 
you know, for me, I've never pitched myself for a podcast. Yeah, I've been on so many because I manifest them. I put out there energetically that I am ready to share my message and support people. And then I have people, I've got so many more booked. People come to me because they want to hear me. That's playing with the energetics. And And even then, even then, I messaged you. So it's not like, because sometimes we could say something and sound like arrogant and be like, no, like it works. It's true. Like I actually messaged Becky and, and even then I was like, we couldn't do the first round. So then I thought, Becky, can we reschedule? And we ended up and now we're here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all energy. Right. And when we, and it's not around manipulating the energy. It's really just playing with it. I truly believe in what I call divine manifestation. So there is an ego manifestation of, I always think of Ariana Grande's song. And it's not saying that she's doing ego manifestation, but I want it, I got it, yeah. right? That's very manipulating energy to get it because energy comes to what you're being. Yeah. But energy stays when you truly feel worthy for it and open to it, right? Because you hear a lot of where, oh, I manifested so much money and then it didn't come the next month. That's because you manipulated it to come. You weren't actually ready to for it to, re- to receive it. So I really teach people to play with energetics and to feel at your core worthy to receive abundantly and limitlessly. And money is the same. It's energy. But money always can have, I say always can have, yeah. people have a relationship with money that has a lot of energetic ties from our caregivers, from society, all of these rules that we apply to what money means. And so on my blog, I really wanted to show people how to play with money and that you get to call money in abundantly. For example, sometimes you may not understand, but for example, our caregivers, in my example, my caregiver was very like, we don't have enough, there's a lack, there's scarcity, we need to be frugal. How does that reflect in our journey in our relationship with money yeah well if you're happy to share like what did you then decide around money if that's what you were shown I was just like broke is not an option anymore like broke is not an option I'm gonna um and just be grateful and just have that loving energy towards money like I appreciate you we get along and I respect you this means I'm not gonna go out every weekend and just go to the nice fanciest so sometimes I do when the girls are like oh let's go out like we sometimes do but it's not like a regular thing for me because I value money and spending 500 800 pound on a bill like just sipping wine there's so much I could do with that where it be learning where it be books where it be uh, buying new equipment for the podcast or you know so many things just mm-hmm. as an investment and just just being able to be self-aware okay this is yeah this is your reality and this is how you brought me up and you have done so well up until now and now I'm taking charge and we are not doing this I love that and what I really heard there was like the intentionality of money of where you want to flow it right and most people have a story coming from their caregivers and mine was there's never enough money and money equals arguments, right? Equals conflict because there was never enough. And I found myself just having the same pattern with money. I never had enough. I had the feast and famine payday. I was like, woo, let's go shopping. And then end of the month living, you know, to the very penny. I just mapped out exactly the same pattern because that was what I saw and that's what I expected and that created my energetic frequency around money and that's awareness right as you said it's being really aware of what's the pattern that's playing out and then it's always okay I see where this comes from right I see where I picked this up I see where I thought this was normal and then knowing you get to redefine it because if it's all energetics if it's all just programming in your mind you get to say okay I'm going to stop the programming and I'm going to rewrite it And then it's embodying that new pattern. Like you said, it's choosing, deciding where money flows in and how much comes back into you, right? And it gets to be a playful game because I notice with clients, there can be a real seriousness around money. 
and especially you know compassionately when there's not enough because I always go to like, the root chakra like there's this security and stability that's needed for money so if it genuinely isn't enough and you're struggling to pay rent yet you're being conditioned that you've got to invest goodness knows what in a coach you know to be successful in all these messages you know that's really going to trigger that security and that stability in your root chakra and so it's really coming back to being playful with money but with the compassion that there still is a need for money in the society we're in right food bills and cost of living of course is going up and it's balancing where you're flowing money with the playfulness of calling more in a hundred percent I love that for the person that doesn't know how to be aware what tips can we give them so awareness is just coming into the present moment okay and for many of us we are maybe in a busyness or we're future focused and so it's the power of what I think everyone should have is a morning ritual where you are just choosing to connect in with the moment where you're at noticing the thoughts noticing the emotions in your body noticing the patterns and with that awareness you then get to come back into your soulful self and say okay well, what do I choose now is there any healing I need to do what can support me to move through this you know and create a new way of being but it all comes from pausing and that doesn't mean you know meditating on your mat it really is just coming into the present moment and it's a practice of learning to notice your thoughts notice the emotions and feelings in your body and it then becomes this practice where you just I had it this morning where I said I noticed some self-sabotage, right? I was making a cup of tea and I just felt this pang in my chest. So I paused, I tuned in. It was like, Becky, you're avoiding something, right? Because I practice it so much, I can oh, feel God. the nudge. But Becky 10 years ago, who was deep into her burnout, you know, wouldn't have noticed it because she was so busy. I don't think I was ever present. But if I was, it was maybe enjoying my wine and being present with my wine maybe so it's just a practice of coming to the moment and that's why rituals and that's why I created them all on my blog brings you back into the moment I love that you said that and especially when it comes to the wine even then we're not we're not even present with the wine because because we begin to get tipsy right and one strong glass leads to another strong glass and even then it's like we've numbed our feelings and I remember uh, in the private sector especially the, the last time the last moment we can put a patient on the operating table this is this isn't counting emergency this is just counting normal business is 10 p.m so imagine if a surgery lasts for a couple of hours we're there till past midnight right and I was just like it was so hectic to the point where like I'm on adrenaline and I'm like it's 11 p.m it's nearly midnight I've been here since 7 30 8 a.m like I'm so done and I'm like I'm so agitated I'm so uneasy like I just want to go to the gym because I just can't deal how am I going to get to sleep at this time and then further on and then my colleague, he's young, and he was like, just have a glass of wine. And I'm, I'm the type of girl that has a very addictive tendency. Like, I see it in my family. I see it, and I know myself too. And I was like, one glass of wine. It starts off with one. Then it's going to be two. Then it's going to be three. And then it's like, I'm downing a bottle by the end of it. So I'm like, this, it, like, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. So it's, it's like you say, being present and being aware of our emotions and being in tune. If something doesn't feel right, if something, and that, whatever that may be, that may be journaling, that may be having um, a walk in nature, listening, that may be taking a yoga class, that may be whatever that may be. I saw um, another blog post. It says the law of vacuum and cleanse to receive. Mm. Yeah. So the law of vacuum is a universal law that says, whatever you cleanse and you create space for and that space is filled with source energy so it goes back to where I said my passion around feng shui right cleansing the clutter creates this vacuum and then we'll be filled with light energy and it's the same within us too so a lot of my work is around emotions for clients because many of us aren't shown how to process emotions as children and what happens just say we have the emotion of frustration if you've never been shown how to release the frustration and you're being triggered a lot especially as we are in our businesses right we get triggered you're just 
operating from a glass that's overflowing of frustration. So everything is frustrating you. And so a lot of the work we do is cleansing the energy, create this vacuum that gets to be filled with source energy and possibilities and divine miracles. And then you're not actually getting triggers, triggered as much as well. So it's always thinking about your actual physical space as well as your energetic body of what's actually what is this actually full of right now and can I cleanse to call in more miracles and more lightness how beautiful and and it becomes like a practice right we have to consciously think okay today we're going to do this but once we see the results once we see things come in once we're in the flow we're just like this was really worth it Becky what is your favorite book Oh, good question. So I, I went through a season of reading a lot of self-development and I'm actually not in a season of reading right now, which is quite interesting. I don't know whether you ever have that, but I feel like I'm in a season of implementing good. and I feel like I've absorbed so much. Yeah, I've absorbed so much that it's now around embodying it on a deeper level. It's a deepening. And my favorite book that I reread over and over and over is a book by Tosha Silver, and it's called Outrageous Openness. I was gifted it, and I will be honest that if I would have seen this book in a bookshop, I would never have picked it up. It's one of those spiritual covers where you think, I'm not reading that. <laughs> is, it glittery? is it glittery and cute or what? No, is it? no, it's very, it's a very spiritual image that I would have, I would bypass it because I would have thought that's too woo woo and spiritual and a bit too seriously spiritual for me. But the book itself is all around divine feminine and intuition. And it's the most beautiful book of mini stories, mini lessons. And I, take it whenever I travel I travel with it I read it sometimes just one chapter invigorates my soul so that's my go-to oh beautiful thank you for sharing that what advice would you give to your younger self that was burnt out at work Mm. good question I've never actually asked myself that before I think it's, there's more to life yeah. like burnout is a sign that you're out of alignment a hundred percent and this is a sign that it's not the right direction for you and I try to avoid that message but if I could go back and speak to her like it's safe to try a new direction it's safe to yeah move forward towards this unknown path you don't need to know the path just it is safe to explore it don't keep yourself in this energy because I did for years I love that if you had a billboard on the side of the highway what would it say ah, <laughs> these are great questions thank you girl <laughs> thank you I appreciate you and the, the words that just came up then intuitively would go for it Aww. go for it yeah I love it I love that because in the world we live in, we are so like, go, go, go. And sometimes when we're in that go, 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 we don't take time to look inwards. What do you want? What do you, what do you enjoy? What do, what are your interests? If you didn't have to do what you had to do and work for money, what would you do? Because sometimes we are programmed from such a young age, go to university, do this, do a BTEC, do A-levels, go to university, do the apprenticeship and do the nine to five. And sometimes it it just doesn't seem to fit. It just doesn't seem to work. And then mm-hmm. we find ourselves with with anxiety, with PTSD, with burnout, with like the crying a lot, with with sleepless nights, completely exhausted, completely isolated. Because when we do shifts like that, when when I used to do shifts like seven a.m. to ten p.m., I just felt very isolated very Mm -hmm. isolated not seen not heard and there's only so much you can take before the cup begins to overflow so beautiful thank you for that i um, i've I've began doing this thing where my previous guest asked you a question and then you will Mm -hmm. leave a question for my next guest so my previous guest asked you are you the architect are you the architect of your destiny yes yeah i am now I am that. I love that. Yeah, I am now. And I wasn't for a long time. Um, yeah, and I, I sometimes say it as like, I'm the artist. Yeah. And like, we're creating our painting. Yeah. Our and artist feels really creative and playful. 
Whereas architects, I think for me personally, feels very masculine. <laughs> and that scares me. Whether I am the artist and I'm painting my masterpiece. <laughs> I love that. So, so while I ask you other things, you think of a question for my next guest. Okay. Um, Becky, are you the co-author of a book? Am I what? Sorry. Are you the co-author of a book? I am. Yes. Tell me about that. What's the name? Yeah. Oh gosh, I should know that I've had a mind blank. <laughs> it's okay, I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, it was a beautiful um, opportunity with someone that I was in a program with actually and she's a very creative soul. She writes poems and we were invited to share a chapter around awakening. I think it's called Divine Awakening actually. Um, and I had recently um, lost my dad. He'd passed away. I was grieving. Yeah, thank you. And it just came at a divine time because his passing actually expanded me into this go for it. I am the artist of my life because it really, the grief for me was so powerful that it was actually, if there's, and I don't mean to sound too morbid to the listeners, but if there's one thing we're sure of. Yeah is death that is inevitable yet most of us don't think about it and where I was coasting for years I wasn't thinking about it I was just surviving and so it really allowed me to come into this energy of I'm here to thrive and go for it and so this opportunity came to me to share my story around awakening and it was just such a beautiful thing of all these women coming together sharing their stories it's also very healing because I'm currently writing a book and I just feel like a weight being lifted off mm. so just kind of healing and wow beautiful beautiful process sometimes um in grieving lies a lot of pain but as long as we know that our loved one is with us they're always present sometimes they send us signs yeah. it's just being able to recognize and tap into that um out of all the courses you've taken out of all the information you have taken in consumed what has been the best or the most that has fulfilled you so probably would be learning NLP mindsets because understanding how our minds work yeah. allows you to get your power back and realize that it's just programming. It's just like a computer. And I think we've all heard that before, but learning it in depth and becoming a qualified mindset coach gave me this permission to really transform people's mindsets because I know what's possible. So I think it was a nine month experience. I really, I didn't want to do like the one week ones where you touch the service. I wanted to go deep with it yeah. and like really understand the subconscious mind. So that's been the most powerful thing for me. And then it's just been a deepening since then of understanding the connection to the subconscious, to the energetic body, yeah. the chakras. And it's just been really powerful. Who did you do that with? So I did that with the Mindset Coach Academy. Beautiful. Becky, tell me about you. Tell me about your socials. Where can we listen to your... No, where can we read your blogs, your website? <laughs> yeah, thank you. So I am mainly on Instagram. So it's Becky Stanton underscore Mindset Coach. And I love Instagram, the visuals and just showing up as the soulful CEO and then I also have my website which is beckystanton.com and that's where the blog is with lots of rituals and guidance for your expansion beautiful how can listeners connect with you how can they support you we have the launch coming up soon the membership Ooh. when is that coming through so that's going to be in April okay, um, definitely follow on Instagram and I'm going to be doing things a little differently in April, which is really exciting. There's some new stuff coming. Um, and yeah, I, on Instagram for me, it's just sharing permission for people to expand. And you mentioned the fuck it era that really yeah, resonated yeah, yeah. with people recently of just being like, we're here to expand, fuck it, right? And yeah. that's my purpose of Instagram of really giving people permission to go for it. Beautiful, no messing about, being in alignment, being unapologetically yourself, not thinking what others 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 think, feel, or say about you, letting go of the insecurities, letting go of the negative self-talk, and just being you and bossing up in a way. Um, Becky, what is your question for my next guest? Have you thought of it? Yeah. The question is what message? do you feel your future self has for you right now? 
Oh, <laughs> what <laughs> message does your future self yeah have for you now have for you now oh my lord I couldn't even make if even if I wanted to make up these questions I wouldn't even be able to come <laughs> up with these. have for you now okay Becky thank you so much for being you for being that light and just for being honest for for saying your message because when we see fashion when we see the perks when we see we just have this idea in our mind but we don't know what truly goes behind the scenes right the burnout mm -hmm. the the authenticity the intuition the alignment does it feel real is this for us how do you break away so thank you for just living your truth and raising the vibration of the planet and the community because by you being you you create community more girls come and in in that way we cause a ripple effect because then they they you can see the difference with them with their friends with the families with the partners in their business so then mm -hmm. then people are like wait what happened who did you go to so then it, it all creates positivity and love and, and and beautiful light as well so thank you so much becky thank you for taking the time to come on gentle touch i appreciate you Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> You're very welcome, girl.